Welcome to Working in Teams, Leadership, All Members as Leaders, Leaderful Teams. This is Lecture B. The objectives for Leadership, All Members as Leaders, Leaderful Teams are to develop and implement standards for shared leadership roles in complex, stressful, and often hierarchical health-related environments. Discuss progression from self-awareness to self-leadership to team leadership. Demonstrate collective, concurrent, collaborative, and compassionate activity. If you recall, in Lecture A, we touched upon each of these objectives and began to detail the four C's of effective leadership. In Lecture B, we will examine these concepts more closely. The final three C's of leaderful leadership include collective, compassion, and collaboration. In addition to concurrent, the first of the four C's, leaderful leadership is also collective. Because we have already made the point that groups are led by more than one person, it can be said, therefore, that groups can be led in a collective fashion. The persons or members who possess the most targeted knowledge at a point in time work with other members to make a joint decision, and the team leads as a unit. Although it is often a person who begins an activity or brings an issue to the floor, leaderful teams join in and may collectively share and rotate leadership. Collaboration is the third of the four C's and is an inherent characteristic of the leaderful team. Collaboration results in shared decision-making and joint sharing of ideas and responsibilities. To become more leaderful requires that compassion is practiced. Compassionate leadership results in an increased sense of being valued across the team, regardless of background or social standing. Dignity, respect, and the true willingness to honor contributions across the team are hallmarks of the new behaviors required by teams of the future. Teams recognize that values are interconnected with leadership and that there is no higher value than democratic participation. Let's return to the comparisons that spawned the discussion. Recall the comparisons between old and new leadership behaviors that we started in Lecture A? Let's stack them up side by side on the slide and compare. Old school models are serial, but the tenets of forward-facing organizations are concurrent. Old school models are more likely to be run by control, while leaderful teams exhibit collective leadership tendencies. Old school models have a tendency to be more disengaged and disinterested, while compassion is the order of the day with modern teams in leaderful leaning groups. People are beginning to think differently about the way knowledge is valued and who in a company is in possession of that knowledge. Many are questioning the idea that knowledge is held only by a select group of experts as they realize that useful information is distributed throughout the organization. An increased focus on knowledge management systems is a reflection of the wisdom of the workforce and has increased the need for systems that can capture, store, and manipulate distributed expertise. For example, a currently popular area of focus in knowledge management is power of the crowds, which is an approach that taps into collective and distributed wisdom across groups. The premise is that when small collections of wisdom and experience are joined together, the power that can emerge is exponentially higher. Recall in Lecture A that we discussed how concurrency can increase power. The concept is the same. An alternative term, an alternative term frequently used is crowdsourcing, and there are several popular texts out on the market that are based in collective wisdom. Another example of shared knowledge outside of healthcare is the best practice replication system that facilitates the transfer of knowledge across Ford's vehicle assembly plants. Each week, via an intranet, new ways of doing something or creative and cost-saving measures are distributed across all of the plants. There is no obligation for those who receive these helpful hints to implement these practices. However, distributing the knowledge and the experiences from others can stimulate creative thought in other plants. This manner of knowledge collection, management, sharing, and eventual archiving makes a valuable contribution to the body of knowledge held by the organization.
Moreover, when an individual retires or moves on to another position, the knowledge contained within that person's head can be left behind for others to benefit from. There's a great need for this in health IT. Otherwise, we end up continually reinventing the wheel and failing to learn from prior mistakes and successes. The two diagrams on this slide compare and contrast the expert model versus the distributed model. The hierarchical nature of the expert model on the left is illustrated quite clearly. The leader is deemed the expert and the team members are subordinates. The illustration implies that the knowledge flows down the tree branches. In contrast, the diagram on the right reflects the distributed model of leadership where the leader is central. There is no implied hierarchy and expertise flows from various team members to the center. In reality, the arrows from the team members to the leader should be bidirectional, right? If you were tasked with reconceptualizing the distributed model image based on what you know now, how would you draw it? Dixon, in her work from 1999, The Changing Face of Knowledge, used three examples from the Ford Assembly Plants, the Lockheed Martin Corporation, and the British Petroleum Corporation to arrive at this summation. She asserts that organizations stand to benefit from collaborative teams who both give and receive. The implication is reciprocity as knowledge is transferred from one division or one plant or one country to another. Interestingly, Dixon points out that an unintended consequence of knowledge transfer or exchange is that it can lessen the not invented here syndrome. If you are unfamiliar with this syndrome, it is one that is often referred to in the face of resistance to change or new ways of doing things. When teams exchange, the barriers to new ideas can be lessened because these teams are already accustomed to the exchange of new ideas, lessons learned, and other group's best practices. Dixon also suggests that new knowledge is developed via the transfer process. It could be said that while something that worked in a widget plant in Singapore may not work in a plant in the U.S., but the simple exposure to alternatives may stimulate creativity in other locales. Referring to the unit objectives, we must also discuss how progression from self-awareness leads to self-leadership and can continue on to team leadership. When Ryuven bar -On was studying the qualities of successful leaders, he arrived at the awareness that a simple, straight measure of general IQ did not predict successful leadership. The concept of emotional intelligence came to the fore, a concept he coined as the emotional quotient. You can learn more about emotional intelligence in Daniel Goleman's 1985 bestseller, Emotional Intelligence. Further work by others in the late 1980s and early 1990s further refined the concept into social intelligence. Over time, organizations have come to realize that a great leader is one who has this social or emotional intelligence, which is a trait that allows them to not only understand others, but to also have deep perspective on their own behaviors, actions, and emotions. Contrast a socially intelligent leader with a military dictator or some other despotic character. Strength, command, and respect come to mind when one thinks of some great leader in the past, but think about the unfortunate phenomenon of fragging in the Vietnam conflict in the 1960s, where officers who were perceived by the enlisted men to be unpopular, harsh, inept, or overzealous were murdered by their own troops. In today's marketplace, particularly in health IT environments, an emotionally inept or harsh leader will not get fragged, but team morale and performance can degrade to the point of abject failure. In addition, the health IT marketplace is full of opportunity, and a strong organization wants to attract and retain the best. Autocratic style is out of vogue and can cost an organization dearly. Workers no longer work for one company their whole life and retire. There are far more choices and opportunities for the workforce, in contrast with the foot soldiers of yesteryear. The point here is that a great leader is one who gains a robust self-awareness and uses that understanding of self to then become a strong self-leader. Consequently, a person of strong character with leadership qualities can then progress to the consummate leader of teams. It becomes clear that moving from good to great requires the progression from self-awareness to self-leadership and eventually team leadership. 
The final objective for this unit is to demonstrate collective, concurrent, collaborative, and compassionate activity. We have provided a lot of background material and a few examples for you to gain a deeper understanding of these four C's. In the activities associated with this unit, you will have the opportunity to apply the material and knowledge gained in these slides to several scenarios. These activities are designed to stimulate you to think critically, play a variety of roles, take different positions on an issue, and to give you the opportunity to dialogue and interact with others. In completing the activities, remember the four C's and apply them to the situation. It may be beneficial for a group member to play the devil's advocate or contrarian to create more realism for the activities. In short, the best way to meet this objective is to practice these activities in the context of a few scenarios that have been prepared for this purpose. This concludes Lecture B of Leadership, All Members as Leaders, Leaderful Teams. In summary, we have delved into the characteristics of various leadership styles and traits. There are emerging challenges, particularly in recruiting and retaining talent, in today's competitive marketplace. The movement is toward distributed models and away from the more rigid and hierarchical traditional models of leadership. We finished out the last three of the four C's. The activities associated with this unit should give you the opportunity to apply all four of the C's. Finally, we discussed the aspect of social intelligence and its contribution to self-awareness. The point is that a good leader is one who understands not only the team members, but themselves. Being aware of your own behaviors and reactions will help you to become a better person and a better leader.